I wanna know what you're thinking There are some things you can't hide I wanna know what you're feeling Tell me what's on your mind Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Front Row Negative, the podcast. We are doing our Halloween brackets, and I don't know which number this is because I'm doing them randomly. We record randomly and we throw them up randomly because we have lives. We keep you suckers on your toes, son. We do. We do. <laughs> I'm your host, Aaron. And I am tired as fuck. No, I'm Chris, as always, for 17 people to listen. Thank you for returning and, you know... Hanging in how, there with us. How are you tired as fuck? Your kid's on layaway right now. I have two <laughs> out in the world. Dude, that I possible? am. I'm pre-gaming the end of my life. Okay. All right. So once, if I'm already, it's, it's like uh, Hulk and Cap. He goes, that's my secret, Cap. I'm already tired. So you can't make me more tired. I'm already fucking exhausted. I'm used to it. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Yep. Activia. Activia. Just saying. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. where it goes. But tonight we are joined by, I'm kind of surprised because I didn't think this would ever happen. A former co host of a podcast I was on a long time ago has joined. Um, <laughs> didn't think that would happen. We met up at a toy show recently. And uh, my old co host, Jeff from Deep in the Horror, Texas, is here. How are you doing? How's sir? it going? How are you doing, guys? Thanks, doing good. good. <laughs> Yeah, so this, I got some uh, big shoes to fill, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty cool uh, seeing you at Gulf Coast uh, Toy Show. I was just, yeah, you were working your table there with uh, your daughter Gwen, and I was just like, man, I think we see each other what maybe once or twice a year because yeah, of the damn toy show. Yeah, yeah, you know, the toy show were at uh, Frightmare. If uh, we oh, yeah. each other, at Frightmare, which is going to be a learning curve again on this coming year. Next oh year. yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I missed out on the toy show, but I made a lot of money in Philadelphia, so I can't be upset, I guess. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's right. You're at Philadelphia. So how was that show, Chris? You know, man, it was interesting. Um, And so I've been getting that question a lot. And really, it's kind of a culture shock because, um, you know, as an artist doing the cards that I do for the trading card sets and stuff like that, um, when you're at the regular Comic Palooza or something like that, and you're being the giant artist alley, there's kind of another uh, face and sea of faces, you know, and... Uh, at the this the show was a non sport trading card show like the Philly non sport trading card trading card show, and I was one of only four artists that were invited. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so when people came up to me, instead of just like looking at my table and kind of going, "Oh yeah, cool shit, man, I don't want to buy anything," just walking away, you know, yeah. it was more like people were coming up like, "Holy shit, you're Chris, what's up, man?" And it's not these are not faces I recognize. I, and then there's some of their screen name or something like that from Instagram or uh, Marvel collecting groups or whatever. I'm like, oh shit, that's cool, man. So it was like, not that it's just like a different culture. It's like I was a guest guest as opposed yeah. to just like a guy in Artist Alley, if that makes any sense. It does to a degree. Yeah. So the question really cool. is, question is, was it always sunny? <laughs> Actually, yeah, man. It didn't really have any bad weather. I wanted to go. <laughs> I wanted to go to that bar they own, but there's another for me that was like, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I, I just you know it was kind of it kind of sucked a little bit being up there by myself because obviously I was just a stranger in a strange land, if you will. And okay. you know I didn't want to go out drinking and next thing you know I'm like on YouTube videos. This asshole from Texas got murdered by a serial killer in Philadelphia. You know, like I want to be one of those guys. You know what I mean? Oh, you get you get beat up by Ezra Miller or whatever. <laughs> Ezra Miller, yeah, no, yeah. Mark, dude, it's like uh, what was it? Uh, the Bengal ghouls, bitch, pie just throws me in the Delaware River or some shit. This podcast wouldn't even be happy. Or it would be, and you'd just be a host again. You know, yeah. Chris died yesterday. <laughs> Fuck that asshole. You know, no, it was it was cool, man. It was a lot of fun. I only touristy thing I really did, two things. I stayed in a little town that's like right next to Philadelphia. And everything in Philadelphia is like twenty minutes from me everything. Yeah, uh, nice. outside of like New York is like an hour away. So like part of me wouldn't be brave to be like, New York, New York, just for the fuck of it, but you know, mm-hmm. Eastern State Penitentiary was literally 20 minutes from where I stayed. So that Monday, I carved out some time to go and uh, 
you know, explore the paranormal side of, of things that they offered there and yeah. spooky shit. But uh, I did that. And then where I stayed at was literally right down the road from the third largest mall in the nation. Uh, and so I went to this mall. Uh, it's Katie Mills? Dude, Katie Mills don't have shit on this mall, dude. It's it it a place called King of Prussia. King of Prussia, Philadelphia. And it's like, I saw like uh, one of those people that make, they turn the butter. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Oh. Amish people. Amish. <laughs> Amish people? Uh, I yeah, the Amish. Wait, wait, folk. wait, wait! Did you go to an Amish farm or did you go to a mall? There's a big difference. Dude, there were 400 places churning butter. It was an Amish mall. <laughs> was there a bowling alley next door to it? Uh, no, there was like a I've bunch of red lights going off. In the, oh yeah. <laughs> no, no. no, but literally, like, because I was in my hotel room and I'm looking at like shit to do in philadelphia and it was like oh yeah. you can go to the third largest mall in the nation it's in king of prussia i'm like oh shit i'm in king of prussia so i went down there and like i'm fat in 40 41 mm-hmm. and they're like there's 400 malls here i'm like i saw 17 of them in the left so i wasn't going to like you know hoof the whole damn thing i would have came back a whole new man you know what i mean yep. i get you yeah there's sure. no whataburger there there's wendy's there wendy's and wawa do you know what a wawa is is it like something a, that's not Whataburger? I was like a no. dollar store Whataburger. No, <laughs> it's like a, uh, it's like um, you know how there's you have full size sedans and compact cars. Yeah. Okay, Wawa is a compact car compared to Bucky's full size family sedan. That makes oh. sense. Yeah. It's like a mini Bucky's, and um, it's people people in Philadelphia don't have time for your shit. Like when I got in the I got in that gas station. Uh-huh. They're like, you know, they had accents and stuff, and they're doing this and that and the other thing, and like ordering hoagies and 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 you know, let me get a hoagie with the mozzarella. Duh, 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 duh. Uh, dude, I just I didn't talk very much. I didn't want to be like, what are you doing via cowboy? Because I'm sure like I don't think I sound like a inbred hidden uh, redneck, but I'm sure I would up there. You know what I mean? So I kept a very low profile. Oh but, yeah. Uh, you know. So you wore no, a hoodie. What's that? That's it. So you wore a hoodie. Uh, I did. Yeah, the whole time. It was cold up there, man. Oh. The sunny, but only sunny in Philadelphia, but very cool in Philadelphia. Very windy. Okay. Yes. You're dropping the y'all out there. You get your ass jumped. <laughs> uh-uh, no, sir. I, 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 if I did, it was once or twice. And I was like, oh, duck my head and leave. Uh, I tried to yeah. say you you all or you guys just try to figure You in. guys got some big red out there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, dude, it's not, it's not, can I get a Coke? It's can I get a pop or can I get a soda? Can I get a pop? Can I get a pop? <laughs> wow. That's. Yeah. Was it so? Was it a big cultural shock for you? It was, man. I mean, honestly, though, it was beautiful. Like uh, mm-hmm. coming back to Houston kind of sucked because it's just summer here all the time. Uh, up there, it was like postcard Norman Walk- Rockwell paintings of pictures of trees that are orange and yellow and brown, and everything's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. God, you actually see seasons up there. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, and the speed limit is fifty-five. I what? shit you not. Uh, everywhere or just Dude, on the highways? Uh, highways. 55. And it's not it's like not, it's... A, it's not like you can go 70, but you're supposed to go 90 on the highway. <sighs> Dude, it was so weird. Because I have ways on my phone, so of course you need to get notifications for cops and shit. So I'm trying to do like 65 to feel somewhat normal. But like I'm just hauling <laughs> ass past these Philly folk. To I'm feel like, like you're back Dude. in Pasadena? I, ooh, dude, I was like, Sammy Hagar wouldn't bullshit. He must have came from Philadelphia. Was, I just could not drive 55. I was so pissed. And yeah, anyway, but it was fun. I mean, made a lot of money. Made a lot, made a lot of money, and I'm pretty sure I would go back if they asked me to come back. That's awesome. Well, yeah, was cool. I was texting you whenever uh, the toy show happened because usually you're at the toy show whenever we're out there vending. <sighs> I and it, man. your table got replaced by a guy selling nothing but squish mellows, squish marshmallows, whatever, whatever those marshmallow stuff doll things are. It mm, was mm, mm, mm. shelf to shelf to shelf of those giant soft stuffed animals. So what Gwen's pro- or uh, her target for the day was to sell enough Pokemon cards to <laughs> buy a squish marshmallow <laughs> thing. Oh my god! After she hey, made man. her first two dollars. <laughs> She's like, forget that. I'm going to do trading now. So then uh, she had all these other kids come up to her booth and did trade or up to our table and did trades. So last show she did, she only made like a $2. This show, <laughs> she, this show she made $14. Plus, oh, wow. I think she just said she did six trades with uh, people walking by. Um, the only bad thing, though, is that there were a few adult 
card collectors that were trying to take advantage of her. Oh, come the, on, dude. Come on. To the effect of, hey, are you buying cards? See this card? Oh, you touched it. Give me five dollars. And Hell I had no, to walk dude. over there and I had to shoot them away because you know that's what dads do. And sure. uh tell her, say, Gwen, just say you're not buying. Just say you're either trading or you're selling, but you're not buying. And after that, I could hear her say, No, I don't want to give you any money. Buy. And then <laughs> that was it. That's your daughter, man. <laughs> I, 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 I give her a lead and she takes over and does what she wants. But I could hear that from the other side of the table. I'm not giving you money or I don't want to buy that. That looks terrible. So that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a shirt. <laughs> that is. Yeah. No shit. Right. It's <laughs> as a soon to be father of a daughter. Like if uh, some mouth breather is trying to take my daughter for money, man, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I did, didn't do too well. The show from what I, from what I can help tell from the other vendors, um, there was a retro action figure show the day before, which apparently sucked all the money out. So while mm-hmm. there was a, good attendance at this show uh nobody was spending so people spent their big bucks at the other show and we're looking for yes. looking for handout deals yeah. at this show okay yeah so we had a, we had a lot of Jeez. attendees not a lot of spendies so <laughs> uh, it, it, it was it was it was rough even the guy behind me who always sells like the retro masters of the universe and gi joe's he made his table back plus 20 bucks that was ah, dude that's terrible considering that's what those awesome. tables cost that's awful yeah that table is the killer. Now. So affordable. Yeah, it's what wow. they cost now. So that's how the toy show was. And that's where I saw Jeff when he came by. Hey, so, so something good came out of it, man. You know, you pretty you much connect with your old homie and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. Pretty that much. That was pretty cool. It was. That's awesome. So 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 your son Killian showed me his evil dead figure that he picked up. And, and he's like, We got all of them now. I'm like, Oh, you got this one too? Yeah, we got it. Okay, cool. You got this one too? <laughs> yeah, I got it. So home. It's in the box. I got. Is he being this okay. matter of fact? Or are you? Are you? Uh, are you? No, no. That's 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 my son. He's like, he like, found yeah, out. Yeah, I gotta, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I told him when he was born. I go, me and my, your mom went back and forth between Killian and Ash. I go, we were gonna call, name you one or the other, mm-hmm. and nice. I kind of won. I won out, and we called him Killian. And uh, when he hears that now, he just got really deeply involved in Evil Dead after I showed it to him, and he's like. Oh, Neck is doing Evil Dead. He has the. Uh, I'm like, I'm getting them all. And then when he found that 2012 Comic Con exclusive black and white NECA figure, he was like, this thing. He tells the guy to his face, this thing uh, sells about at eighty dollars, and you're letting it go for twenty for me. And I was like, Dude, you, don't, you don't do that. You don't oh say that. my god. And the, guy, and, and the guy started to be nice. He's like, oh man, you really know your prices. I was like. <laughs> I was like, man, you tell me this shit. You don't tell the guy. Like, wait a minute, do that, but do the opposite. Don't do it the other way. <laughs> yes. I was like, golly. <laughs> I'm like, you're like opposite haggling, you know? Oh my god. You're really, you're really letting this go at a low price. And he's so short with me. He's like, hey, 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 bad price. Here, take my money. Take it. Take my money. I don't care. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. You said twenty. You said twenty. You said twenty. You said 20. I, heard I heard you. you. I heard you. You could add eighty. Oh my god. Twenty. <laughs> You're not asking for enough, my guy. But I'll Fast give you forward 20. 25 years, he's in Vegas, like just haggling, working dudes. Like, somebody's somebody counting cards. Like, come over here, talk to him, talk to him. Come here, let me break your legs. You know, just, just... <laughs> well, he's going to be the cooler that's in uh, in Vegas. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Say, hey, hey. I'm going to smack your ass. <laughs> you ain't got time hey, for hey. your shit. Come here. Hey, instead of spending $20 over here, come over here and spend 80 Just, Just come no. and do it now. <laughs> I know my kid's a teenager when he's like, so when you die, can I have all your toys? I'm like, God damn. Oh, God. Do, do I get your Mondo print or do I have to split that with uh, my oh, sister? Dude, uh, oh. don't sleep with your mouth open. Make sure that there's no <laughs> strings hanging down from your fan with like arsenic dripping down in your throat. No. He's never watching Breaking Bad. He's going to like ricin poison me or something like that. Don't show him Game of Thrones either, man. Like, Oh, no shit. God. He's ready to off your ass. Hey, don't, show him, don't, don't show him Dexter. Oh, God. Oh, man. Shit. <laughs> don't, don't show him Dexter. You're like, hey, man, you want to get some new figures at Target? Uh, actually, I was going to go over here and get some uh, plastic sheeting that you use when you paint the walls, Dad. <laughs> what the fuck do you need plastic sheeting for? Because I'm going to 
paint the walls. Uh, all right, all right. Don't like, call your mother. <laughs> hey, Dad, can you take me to Home Depot? What for? I need gloves. For what? <laughs> for after school activities. Does Amazon sell lime? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to what? mention lime. What the hell do you need lime for? Because uh, we're going to work on the back porch, right? <laughs> what back porch? We have to put lime down, Dad. For what? I don't remember hey. this conversation. Hey, hey, do we Dad, have what? a crawl space? <laughs> yeah, do we have a crawl space? <laughs> I think about opening my own construction business, Dad. What do you think? Hey, so, so what kind of shovel? Uh, go to. <laughs> so what kind of shovel is stronger than bone? I'm looking oh, just shit. curious. Oh my god! <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you're, so, you're not gonna go to bed now. You're gonna be paranoid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, speak, well, speaking of future prospects, um, has anybody here seen Halloween Ends? <laughs> in, oh, in that man. in that movie. Yeah. So <sighs> this is yeah, so this, this has been billed as the final, final, final Halloween, probably until Carpenter dies, that we're gonna get. I think wow. uh, uh Jamie Lee Curtis signed like a I'm never gonna play Lori Short again contract or whatever, something to that effect. Uh and it premiered in theaters and it also premiered on Peacock. Um, I'm glad I watched it on Peacock because I have that service. I'm glad I didn't go pay to see this in theaters. And uh, oh, it happened. It's 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 definitely in. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I might be alone on this, but when I was uh-huh. watching the movie, I was like, didn't I see this once before? It was called Return Living Dead Part Three. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it, it really kind of had the right the same familiar foot prints of like what Return of Dead 3 did with the uh, girlfriend becoming the zombie yep. and the guy kind of protecting her because he loved her. Yep. Because it was okay. kind of, you know, role reversal with uh, her it definitely was the new Michael kind of thing. I, I know a lot of people compared it to Friday Part 5. I've seen people compare it to Sid and Nancy. So there's a lot of different comparisons that it had. Uh, and, but overall, uh, well, Jeff, what did you think of it? Um, I liked it better than Halloween Kills. <laughs> but better I, than I, Uber Michael and Halloween Kills? Yeah, that I don't know. I mean, it had character development, which is rare for a Halloween film. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. That, there's a lot of things I think that's always been wrong with Halloween, and this didn't do anything, didn't do any favors. No. But, uh, yeah, man, I could take it or leave it. It really was one of those movies you were just like, eh, I watched it. Yeah, I, I will agree. Chris, what did you think? So here's my problem. This is one of my, what I think is kind of the inherent problem with the Halloween franchise is that ever since, um, was it part two where you got both his eyes shot out with a yes. gun? Yes. Right. Uh, there's your problem right there, man. Like we've never established from the, from the jump that there was any sort of supernatural anything with Michael. Okay. Maybe. Okay. I, I have to stop you there. Uh, this is a new timeline. So I, I know, but I'm saying okay. like I'm, I'm, my, my comparison being that okay. this whole uh, and are we doing spoilers in this thing or not? Yeah, we I, can. I have a point to make. Yeah, so grabbing that dude by the throat in the sewer and like locking eyes and having some sort of magical transference of understanding between Michael and the incel that yeah. was the problem for me because we don't have mystical powers in this timeline, right? So uh, no, yeah. So why all of a sudden now we're having you know, you are the last dragon. Like, what, what, what are we doing? <laughs> you know? Well, um, I kind of got the impression that Michael Myers and this new trilogy, much like Black Panther's suit, as much damage as it takes, powers up. Because, oh, I love that, yeah. Because as soon as he killed the hobo, he, like, straightened up. He stopped wobbling. He lost his arthritis. He <laughs> had, like, five packs of, of, of uh, Activia. He was ready to go kill. He's uh, what is uh, CBD he oil, looked, man. He, he looked did. like Robo. He looked like Robocop when Robocop would have a memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Just, oh, oh, oh. I, but that was the problem, though. Like, if you would have told me in this first 2018 Halloween, showed me some mm-hmm. sort of mystical power about Michael, yeah, this movie, I would have a much higher regard because we've already established that. And that was my point with the whole like shooting two eyes thing. Yeah, we should have established that in the first reboot. Uh, no, that, this, you know. uh, that has an explanation too. Probably just PCP. I don't know. He was in a hospital. He could probably find yeah. drugs in a hospital. 
Well, but, you had to have the darkest eyes, the blackest eyes. It's the blackest eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the devil inside. That's PCP. So, oh, well. man. So, there, there were moments I enjoyed. <laughs> I, I Some of the cinematography was good. Some of the story pacing was good. Um, you know, I think the lack of screen time for Michael was a problem for a lot of people. And honestly, yeah. myself included, um, at the end of the day, this isn't about this new dude. And as far as we know, he's dead, right? So, yep. yeah. There's not going to be a Halloween Junior, you know what I mean? No. Like Michael Junior in the next movie, like unless no. again mystical bullshit, which I've never appreciated in the Halloween any iteration of Halloween where he's some sort of mystical demon no. without them, them them inferring it, but not outright saying it is a problem for me. No. Like own it. No. If this is what you're trying to do, fucking say it. If not, then don't don't toy with it because we can see through your bullshit. Well, they never explained it, and you kind of got a hint of that because I mean in Halloween kills when he came out of that burning house and whooped all those firefighters ass and killed them all he was able to take a neighborhood ass whooping like an hour later i mean they stomped him they shot him they stomped him they got hit in the head of the goddamn iron and he still came back but coming out of the fire of the house and stuff was just a cinematography it was just a cinema a cinematographic thing it was just like hey look how fucking cool this shot is yeah, that's all that was oh, yeah. to me. It wasn't like he was accomplishing anything. Like, I've seen Michael kill a thousand fucking people. Well, what I mean, to do? Like, yeah. you know, he's strong as shit. Honestly, I had this conversation at this toy sh- at this co- at this Philly show with another collector. Um, because I told her, I said, my problem is you can't give us Michael with miss anything mystical and not try to have some explanation. What they try again? I have to refer to these other timelines because granted they don't tie to this, but they've all made the same mistake. That's my that's my common thread mm-hmm. here. They all try to give you mystical shit and don't earn it. Like with the fucking bullshit tattoo. And they even said on multiple things that they're just bullshit and trying to find the man in black. It was just, you know, Halloween fire was a goddamn dumpster fire. So yeah. like, yeah, it, it just, it didn't make any sense for me. If you wanted to root this new trilogy in realism, um, honestly, mm-hmm. Which and we live in a PC culture now where it's hard to uh, approach realistic things like mental illness or uh, mental, from a scientific term, yeah. retardation. Uh, Michael honestly should be some sort of high functioning aut- autistic force of nature, right? Like, I mean, he's just because they're saying he's the embodiment of evil. Yes, but if you call him the embodiment of the evil, then he has to have some sort of mystical evil about him. If not, then he's a dude with a condition where he feels no pain. He has no physical limitations. That's, that's the only way you can really make this thing make sense to me. He needs to, because you know how like some guys, some people that have these, and I'm I'm trying to ride this line without people thinking I'm some sort of like shithead who's trying to say things about people who have uh, handicaps. Or, I'm not saying that, but it's been proven before that some of these guys have abnormal strength, right? Yeah, they do. Mongoloids. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Some guys just built different, dude. Like, oh, he'll have eyes. Like, he'll have eyes. Uh, I just, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it should have been someone should have at some point that other doctor that got curb stomped uh, in the second movie or whatever. Yes, should have left some kind of research behind to show that Michael is just cut from a cloth that no one else is cut from, and you could have rooted a lot of that in science. And it would mm-hmm. make a lot more sense for people for him to be able to withstand as much shit as he's withstood and yes. still keep going. Like you said, taking that ass whooping at the end of the movie and just getting up and being like, oh, that's a little dirt on my shoulder. Everybody's going to fucking die. That's all that was. And that, that, that was my problem with that movie. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, he should be deader than deader than dead. Okay. Right? I, you know what? I, I agree with you to a point. Uh, I think the hope for this third movie was that the way that he, the way that he acted in the second or in uh, in kills was it would be revealed in this movie that he was a robot all along the, a silver shamrock robot. That was the hope. That that's what people were hoping for. And okay. apparently, hope was not kept alive because we got old man Myers running off a script of Zack Snyder, and we got this movie. What scares me is that this was a product of this elevated horror thing with Midsommar and hereditary stuff. And they tried to yes. do what mob mentality and, ha- and Halloween kills. And then I don't, I can't even put my finger on what they're going for with Halloween ends. But this makes me scared for when they're doing these new, um, the Exorcist. Oh, the guy, the yeah. Exorcist. I, I'm, I'm terrified what they're going to do to that series now. 
Because Exorcist, uh, I think there's supposed uh, to be a whole new trilogy. Uh, yeah, whole new trilogy for Exorcist. Oh. They've been talking about a new Nightmare on Elm Street mm. because Bloom is wanting to co-produce that. There was uh, what's another one? One of the other big names. I can't think of it now. But yeah, I heard Did Exorcist. You the new Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Yeah, that was enjoyable. I enjoyed I that one. Yet. It no, felt like it's really... another Hellraiser movie. Yeah, they weren't really trying to reboot it or anything. They just kind of no. just stepped into the world of what the boxes and the Cinnabites kind of represent. Yeah. Cinnabon. It, it, Cinnabons it just, are delicious. Cinnabons. Right Cinnabons. Yeah. It just felt like another Hell, uh, Hellraiser <laughs> sequel. That's all it felt like. Nothing really special about it except for they they got rid of like the leather kind of uh, costumes and just made it all different types of flaps of skin. That that like was tor- it. Yeah, like but the old wasn't soul, uh, torture souls toys. Yeah, torture. Yeah, like torture torture soul stuff, like McFarlane yeah, stuff. But man, like that was the whole point of his. Uh, what's homeboy that wrote that? I can't. His name was on the tip of my tongue. Clive Barker. Clive Barker. The whole thing was rooted in like the as you know BDSM underground. Not thing. really. Re- read the book. Read the book. Hellbound. I've read interviews with him. Like he spent a lot of time in those clubs, man. And, and that's where a lot of his inspiration <laughs> came from. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, even yeah. up. I mean, I can't I, I, I'm me, not, but... I'm not either. I'm not either. I read the, I did read the book last year. Cause I'm like, okay, why are people upset over the other Hellraiser movies? So I read Hellbound Heart. I have the books of blood. I've been going in on those as I'm reading black phone. Uh, this movie has nothing to do with the book. It's a completely separate thing, but the original movie to a degree follows the book more accurately than kind of any other novelization I've read or I have uh, seen. It's pretty spot on. I think the only thing that's different is the way the Cenobites are presented and what they are in the movie versus in the book. So Aren't they supposed to not take joy in what they do? They're just like, they're no. flex holes, right? No, they they take pleasure in hurting people. Oh, okay, maybe I'm misunderstanding. It, that, basically, yeah. if you're smart enough to solve the box, you're smart enough to take pain. So, Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's kind of the the role with them. And are some of them like are some of the Cenobites' previous victims, right? Or am I, am I remember that correctly? That's never that's never really explained. Oh, okay. Uh, that, that's never really. They're just kind of like beings in the shadows, kind of a uh, yeah, open ended. Well, that was that was what was kind of weird though. So Pinhead did kind of have that origin story where he was a soldier that did the lament yeah. configuration and became... right. Uh, that's what I was like saying. I'm thinking to myself, and like, that and, okay. and that's the movie. Those are the movies. Those yeah. are the movies. Not the books. Yeah. And, yeah, not the books. Oh, okay. Well, well I mean, I'm not, I'm not doubting your Clyde Barker credit. Yeah. I know you're a, bigger, yeah. a, a bigger fan than I am. So I'm just, I, I'm just going by things I, I, I guess I tried to piece together from what I watched. And no, I just, like that. the books, I, I was curious how the books match up to the movie. Ah. The one I book was just... I was interested in was uh, the Scarlet Gospels. I think it's the last yes. one. And yeah. that's where they actually mix with uh, Scott Bakula's character from Lords of Illusions. I he's like an occult detective, and he kind of mm-hmm. investigates the Pinhead and the Cenobites. All the really, and I go, yeah, wow, that's a cool, that's a cool tie, you know, whatever team up kind of story. Like it's kind of a tie-in type thing. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, but I never read it, but I, it, it sounded interesting. I, I was lucky enough to find all the Clive Barker books at Half Price Books, so nice. I just started buying them. And I'm like, hey, you know, ten bucks for all these books? Sure, I'll read them. I've got ten. I got ten years left in my life. I'll read them. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna do it your way there? All I'll right. do it my way. <laughs> hey, that's that's how you do it. But yeah, well, I mean, so I'm not trying to be contradictory, contradictory, contradictory with y'all on anything. I just I'm just giving my opinion. Like I just things that the way I see stories, and I'm like this no, whole it's... thing with Halloween. It's like it should have really been rooted in realism to make it more scary. Because that's what's really scary at the end of the day is the realistic shit. What could happen? Definitely. To me, anyway. Yeah, I, 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 I will agree with you to a point. Yes, real, real life is much scarier than fantasy. Yeah. I want a good movie. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. Sucks. We, we have well, that's true too. Seventy-eight. I mean, that's. What sucks, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, wow, you really haven't gotten it right since '78. Nope. Greed, nope. man, money, the Acads or whatever the the the, the Acad guy that owns the rights just kept rebooting it just to because he knows we're idiots and we'll go see it. So yeah, yep. it's, it's a franchise. I mean, it's look at Jeepers Creepers. I mean, come on, even like, oh. oh my god, yeah. I mean, how many Creeper movies do you really need in your life? 
<laughs> Only, honestly, honestly, two was enough. We don't need the other two. Right. Especially after the whole thing came out about Victor Selva. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's disgusting. But, I mean, Nick Otero is doing the same thing. And True. he's just milking Walking Dead and now Creepshow also. So True. There's not, there's not a line in the sand for this guy. He's just going to keep on. Money, 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 money. Producing until he runs out. He's going to keep producing exactly. until he runs out. Um, well, speaking of running out, I think it's time to jump into our brackets. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear these three assholes talk about uh, horror movies uh, from the 90s? Yeah, let's do it. Pretty much. So so what we're doing is that you know, this is this is the, the part of the month or part of the year where we go through our you, – you've heard of March Madness. Well, we've got the Halloween uh, hack fest or whatever you want to call it, where we go through <laughs> – a series of popularity brackets and pick our movie that we least hate and uh, battle them all out with each other. <laughs> Remember, you're not battling characters. You're not battling uh, pivotal scenes in a movie. This is just what movie do you like most? Get your vote. And the best two out of three wins and proceeds forward. And tonight we are covering the 90s. Now, what oh, I've yeah. done to set this up is I have not told our listeners or anybody who submitted their brackets in who our guests are, because sometimes we have to change up guests. It happens. And also, I don't want our our listeners DMing these people, asking them to vote a certain way to try to win. (laughs) So so it it happens. Hey, we have to have the clay analogy effect into play. So (laughs) no shade intended, right? (laughs) No no shade intended. But we have to kind of set things up so that way everybody gets a fair chance of trying to win. And if you've heard our previous bracket episodes, you know anything can happen. True. Uh, not, not the best can win, and <laughs> not the worst can fall out, especially that, ham- <laughs> especially that Hammer episode. Oh, man, I said my worst uh, thing. Oh, boy. I, yeah. So, we are covering 90s tonight, and let's just jump right into it. Our first battle up is 1997's Anaconda versus 1999's The Haunting Remake. And you sent Jeff, since you're our, our uh, guest, take your favorite. Which one are you going to go with? I'm going to go with The Haunting. You go with The Haunting? Yep. That is uh, probably got one of my favorite. Um, I don't know. It's a guilty pleasure for me, but yeah. it's actually just I enjoy that film better than Anaconda. <laughs> I, saw Anac- <laughs> I saw Anaconda in theaters, and it was literally the uh, snakes on a plane for us in the 90s. It was the uh, what the hell did I just sit through? <laughs> At least the popcorn was good, you know. <laughs> um, but I, I'm, the haunting I'm, is, uh, man, come on, guys! That cast is amazing, and yeah. Uh, yeah. and the uh, set design is uh, unbelievable. Yes, I think this is the film that uh, John Devant did after he did Speed. I, I believe so. Is that I right? Believe so. And so I was like, wow. I mean, he went he went all out. So I was like, kind of impressed. And uh, yeah, it would n- never would I imagine that it would actually be, uh, I guess, overtaken by uh, Flanagan's uh, great Netflix series because that was obviously the, the better one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but for a 90s film, it was, uh, you know, <laughs> cheesy, cheesy, but fun. She- it is that, that, that kind of sums it up. That definitely, sums it up. I was gonna say, I feel like that might be the, the ruling, uh, the ruling credo of the, of the night here, but all right, Chris, yeah. what's your pick? I'm gonna have to agree, man. Uh, I, you know, there was a joke there about researching to make sure I watch Anaconda and watching the wrong film and being like, what kind of bracket is this? <laughs> but uh, no, no, uh, I remember both these movies fondly for different reasons. Uh, you know, I uh, I kind of am upset about Anaconda because we introduced us to Jennifer Lopez and that woman is just, uh, you know, fake as all can get out. But um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in the green. So I think the way to go is the haunting for sure. I mean, yeah. Anaconda did have some good practical effects and it was a movie that didn't have a stoned uh, Ice Cube as a cast member. So was he not stoned? How do you know wait, that? Hold on. Did both these movies have Owen Wilson? I'm just not thinking about it. Yes. They did. Yeah. Holy crap. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, yeah the they both died, too, in the movie. They both died. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, it's Al. Uh, oh, wow. what, the, what, the, he got his head bit off by the anaconda, and then he got his head bit off by the uh, the, the lion flu. Yeah, the lion flu, the, the handle for it. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, same I, same CG uh, effect. <laughs> pretty, God, yeah. pretty much, yeah. Uh, I just use the same stock footage. <laughs> Stone in there again. Change just the body, just the body falling down, ragdolling on the ground. <laughs> uh, I did watch the haunting the other day, and uh, the CGI has not aged well at all. Oh no, it is terrible. Ah, uh, it's it's not good. So Another next up, <laughs> pretty much with these movies. Uh, so next up, we have 1998's The Bride of Chucky versus 1990 Gremlins 2. Ooh. Chris, oh. what's your pick? <laughs> okay. Um, damn it, dude. Uh, I'm going to follow my heart and say Gremlins 2. Gremlins uh, 2. I enjoy that movie way, way more. Because uh, it's a marriage of practical and new effects when they're trying new things. But mm-hmm. you still got the practical effects. And I'm like you, man. I think we're both kindred spirits here. Like, practical effects, for, if done right, are the way to go because it keeps you in the movie, you know? Well, and then, of course, you can make a, an argument that Gremlins 2 is more of a comedy than it is a horror film. But um, the Gremlins is the OG that inspired innumerable, you know, straight to, you know, VHS knockoffs and shit like that. So, Pretty and much. we look at, we look back on a lot of those fondly. So, we'll go Gremlins 2 for sure. You can go Gremlins 2. Yeah. Oh, uh, ooh. See, I like Gremlins too, but Bride of Chucky is a lot of fun, and I love the soundtrack for Bride of Chucky. So, what was the big ones on Bride of Chucky soundtrack? It was a great Cold Chamber song. Cold Chamber, Static X, Megadeth. Oh, uh, the Cold Chamber song was it? Was it Big Truck or was it? Uh, Not Living is actually it's a weird one. Oh, it's really? Okay. It's a it's a dope track. Yeah, kind of. Thing. You had Blood for Days from uh, Static X. You had a lot of good songs on the soundtrack. Yeah, but I mean, I said what I said. But go ahead. You, you, you got, I, felt, I feel <laughs> I like you guys it. are about to vote me <laughs> off of this, but that's fine. No, right? I, no. Hey. I, it's tough for me because I, I enjoy both movies, but I'm the music has me because I, I can t- I can haunt Gwen with that uh, for school drop offs. <laughs> so I'm going to go thing. Bride of Chucky on this one just because the soundtrack. Oh man, Jeff, okay. what's the tie? You're the tiebreaker. Bride of Chucky. Oh, it's, I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna talk to you guys later. <laughs> okay, okay, it's fine. <laughs> I, I love, I love Gremlins too, but I think that Jordan Peele skit where they have you seen that one where the they they talk about Gremlins too and they're working on the script and that one guy comes in is played by Jordan Peele and he's just like, "What do you want? I want like an electric zombie." And they go, you got it. He's in the movie. Uh, I want like a fruit oh, salad, uh, fruit salad gremlin. <laughs> no, you got it. He's that. in the movie. <laughs> I want a gremlin that turns into a bat. He's in the movie. And plus, he's oh. Batman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh. Still, no, that's fine. Guy, oh come on! I mean, Hulk Hogan. I mean, it's really hard to go against gremlins too. It, it Let me is. tell you something, brother. <laughs> that, well, that's that's so good, dude. Come on. Well, like, well, there's two different versions. The theater, the theatrical version has Hogan in it. The home video version had John Wayne, because they were breaking the VHS tape on cable for the John oh, Wayne cutscene. Wow. So I think the theatrical you're right. version I think, I want, I think I've seen the. I think I saw the the that version before the, the, with yes. the John Wayne cut in. Okay. Yes. But still, I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, that's, that's just a, a romantic pick for me. So, I, I, no offense, meant I take none. Hey, hey. Let's move on. It's fine. As, as we learned last time, these picks get harder and harder. Maybe yeah, they start to true. get harder and harder. So, next up, we have the faculty for 1998 versus 1995's <laughs> Species. And Ooh. I'll start this one off. You know what? The faculty is a great movie. It's fun. But honestly, I love titties. Species. So, <laughs> Natasha Hinstridge. <laughs> Natasha Hinstridge. <laughs> That's Come it. On. On. So, Jeff, what's your pick? <laughs> um, faculty. <laughs> it's, oh, anti titty, called... are you? That's fine. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I, I saw Species 1 and 2 in theater. I still uh-huh. have my uh, movie ticket stubs. Uh, oh, wow. But uh, the faculty, man, it, it was disturbed behavior. All these great films came out that time and the faculty was did. bar none it was probably one of my my favorite goddamn uh robert rodriguez films all all the uh the teenage uh, high school of horror movies that were coming out in the, in the 90s oh, shit, that was a rodriguez film wasn't it yes sir yep that's before he really kind of became a robert and I, rodriguez and i think it was a screenwriter for uh scream i think it was Scream, uh, yeah yeah so i was like wow this thing had the creme de la creme 
'90s horror royalty. It was, I guess. It was Rodriguez's <laughs> pulp fiction. It, it, there you go. Actually, yeah, it kind of was. And also, in but in Species though, you had Doc Ock hook up with a hot chick finally, and then he got that's fat. rare. That's, that's rare. true. Yeah, the power yeah. of the tit in the palm of my hand, and then it became the power of the tentacles. So, Chris, <laughs> what's your tie break? Uh, okay, so I, I'm sitting here thinking to myself because. I have fond memories of both films. Mm-hmm. Uh, Faculty does have some great moments. The story um, had some originality to it. I mean, it was, you can see it coming from a mile away. And um, what was the chick, the gothic chick? She said um, gutter, what she called her, gutter whore or gutter something? She called gutter the other trash. girl gutter, gutter trash, trash or something like that. And I just, I just laughed at that. And I still laugh at it every time I see it. <laughs> um, but which one of these movies... Earned a McFarlane figure back in the day that we all wanted. Species. Spe- species did. Species. I'm going to go with Species. I'm I was a McFarlane species. figure hunter, man. So if we're going by our just our personal just you know love for what we got, then you know, that even now you see those. Figures. Yeah, exactly. I got two of them. I got exactly. uh, Eve and it got Frank. Was it Frank? Fred? Uh, I believe so. And, and the, could... Yeah, we talk about our love for practical effects, man. I mean, yeah. you know. H.R. Geiger. And, yeah, exactly. H.R. So. Geiger. All right, so next up we have 1996's Scream versus 1997's Mimic. So Jeff, start it off. It's Scream for me. Scream? Uh, yeah. I love Mimic. Uh, don't get me wrong. It was one of those weird ones that was uh, it was in tune with films like Relic and stuff like that that came yes. out back in the day. Yep. But for for a big reason, uh, Scream was the uh, the meta horror film I think none of us knew we needed. That is true. And it that, started all off. It got what I know what you did last summer, teaching Miss Tingle, all those things going. Valentine. Uh, all those. Uh, yeah. All yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, Valentine is. Our yeah. Urban Legends. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know yeah. what? I, li- I like Urban Legends Part 3. I like the third one because it has nothing to, it. nothing to do with the other two. It's nothing to do with the other one. Uh, Chris, what's your vote? Oh God, um, Scream is is the hands down winner because it's it brought horror back to us, didn't it? You know what I mean? Like we had it, '80s horror, and then we had '90s horror, and there's a Godfather and, for each uh, one. And Scream was the Godfather of '90s horror. Yeah, to a degree. I yeah, to a degree. Yes, it, it was. Know? And then it spawned the Bud Light commercial. What's that? <laughs> right? Come no scary. Yeah. You think it's a scary movie? You think it's a scary movie? Oh, uh, well, it's a scary movie. I mean, well, that, well, the, the chicken before the egg, you know? Like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a win after win after win, you know? Carmeletra's tit got pulled out with a knife. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, that is true. It's smoky. Uh, so, so what's your pick? You're going to pick Scream? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You know what? Sweep it. I'm going to pick Scream as well. Uh, we got I... the NECA release today of the Ultimate Scream figure. Yeah, looks that was cool. Looks pretty cool, uh, especially with the uh, Dead by Daylight Devil Scream mask and a flamethrower of all weapons. Or Dude, I, I, as much as I want to get into the horror figures, I'm already uh, you know neck deep in like Spider Man toys and wrestling figures and, and turtles, Ninja turtles and shit like that. I my wife wouldn't tolerate me being like, "Hey, look, a whole new NECA figure collection. Every day, every figure is between thirty and fifty dollars." She wouldn't. Go yeah, for the it. price has gone up. It has yeah. gone up. So Scream moves on. You know, hey, it's a good movie. It's got a good soundtrack or a decent soundtrack to it. It's got Creed on there, doesn't it? What else? That's part three. That's part three. Yeah. (laughs) The fact that you remember that is is that's even scarier. That's that's the true horror of it. Yeah. You're you're taking us higher. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and that song took him to the gutters too. So Next up, we have 1996's The Frighteners versus 1999's Idle Hands. Oh, and God damn it. Chris started, up, started off. Fuck, man. These movies are kind of in the same vein, aren't they? <laughs> yep. Comedy degree, horror? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Frighteners, though, we're talking about uh, horror royalty, man. Modern yeah. horror royalty from the director. Um, Del Toro. Uh, Del Toro, yeah. Um, and pre-Parkinson's Michael J. Fox. And Wait, do, not, uh, 
Freddie what? versus uh, Peter Jackson. Sorry. Peter Jackson, that's it. Yeah. I was say, it was it was somebody who, I, for some reason, I, I sometimes I superimpose Peter Jackson with Del Toro because of uh, the movie with the, the the lawnmower and the zombies. What's that? What was that called? Uh, Dead, Dead, Alive. Dead Alive. Dead Alive or Dead Alive? Taste? One of those. It's Brain Dead or Dead Alive. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, that's those two movies make me superimpose those two guys together for some reason. I don't know why, but um, but one certainly had to inspire the other, right? It did. I mean, if you didn't have Frighteners, you don't think you'd have Idle Hands. Well, and Justin yeah. Hobbs is hot, so there's Sim- that. Similar to a degree, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, then wasn't and plus didn't Frighteners give us like kind of like the uh, break ground with the ghost technology with the two ghosts? Like the special effects. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. back then you're like, oh, fuck, that's cool, you know, because it was just, it was so new. Uh, and if I, and honestly, if I went, went into my DVD collection, if I had to pick between the two, I'm going to throw the Frighteners in, so it's Frighteners for me. Pick on Frighteners? All right. Yeah. Uh, and Jake Busey, the teeth, his daddy. So, <laughs> so, I mean, Frighteners, you had Michael J. Fox, Jake Busey, you had uh, Jeffrey Combs, you had John oh, Aston as the, the ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all these people in that are in there. Uh, I forget who played the, the, the crazy woman, the, the crazy girlfriend. Um, but then on the other side, in Idle Hands, you've got Devin Sawa. You've got Jessica Alba. You've got... Um, Foggy uh, Nelson. No, yeah, Foggy. Yeah, the guy, Foggy <laughs> Nelson. Uh, and uh, Seth, Seth Green, yeah. Seth Green. And um, Vivica Fox. Who but when you said Devin pro- Sawa is like one of these things is not my yeah. movie. That kid didn't do shit after that movie. He didn't do but shit yeah, before that sorry. movie. Ah, Except for bro. Casper. Yeah, exactly. But uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. And plus he had the offspring perform in Idle Hands. <laughs> With the hand drop off. <laughs> <laughs> it rips, the, rips the scalp off. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Just proves that all he ever does is scream in his songs. So, <laughs> uh, man, that's, again, uh... I have my suspicions where you're going to go with this, but I'll explain once you say it. I know. He said offspring. I think he's on the fence right now. Hey, yeah, I'm on the, I'm on <laughs> yeah, the fence. I'm I was about to fence. say, that's the one thing that's keeping him from saying Frighteners is he loves the offspring. Well, no, because yeah. I, cause I, I love John Aston's uh, uh, role in the Frighteners, and so is Jeffrey Combs' role. I love those are two oh, of my hell favorite. yeah, dude. Jeffrey Combs is awesome. Jeffrey Combs and John Aston are, are, are great. So I'm like, that's what that's what that's what's teetering me on the fence. I mean, Jessica Alba and the Offspring versus John Aston and Jeffrey Combs. And... <laughs> it's like that black dude from the South Park. It's Michael Jackson. Come on, it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> 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 but he's Michael Jackson. I'm sorry. You know what? Ahead. You know what? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say Idle Hands because Foggy Nelson gets killed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and Seth Green has a bottle in his head. That was a cool effect, though, yeah. That was, yeah. So I'm going to choose Idle Hands. So Jeff looks like you're the tiebreaker. <laughs> Golly. Like, uh, that's a tough one. Yeah, because they're both they're fun. Both cla- they're, they're classics, yeah. And I, I really do think of them as classics because, like, Idle Hands was so, uh, man, that started the whole, what, MTV films, I think? or yep. I don't know if that was MTV. Yeah. No, no, like, no, Joe's apartment did. Joe's apartment did. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. So... You you said it, Aaron. Jeffrey Combs' role in Frighteners just takes it for me. That was like the occult Molder. I wish we would have had. Yep. Yeah. Uh, right. But uh, Frighteners is the one I'll probably reach for more than Idle Hands. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, hey, it happens. It's a vote of popularity, and Frighteners moves on. And something needs to be said for these movies that aren't moving on. We're gonna. We're. I don't think we've either. We don't hate them. I'll, no, no. We, none of us have poo pooed. We haven't poo pooed these movies. It's just you're giving us, you know, you want pepperoni pizza or pepperoni pizza with extra pepperoni, and extra cheese. It's like, oh, you want extra cheese. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, know. it's, it's, it's a pick. You have to pick. Yeah. So I next like up, a, I like both, but it's, it's tough. Like you said, it, it, it gets yeah. tougher. It's tougher. So next up, we have 1990s Tales from the Dark Side versus 1997's Wishmaster. I will start this <laughs> yeah. one off. Uh, I've seen all the Wishmaster movies. I enjoyed the first one. The rest happened. Uh, no, part two was okay. Part two was okay. Uh, I'm a sucker for anthologies, and I like Tales from the Dark Side. We got a young Christian Slater. We have a young of a whole bunch of other actors in their up and comings. 
I saw him to pick Tales from the Dark Side because it was uh, it was fun. And also you get to see like a little kid, uh, Joey Lawrence. No, Matthew Lawrence at the very beginning uh, doing Tales. So Reading that is book, my yeah. pick with the book. All right, so uh, Jeff, what's your pick? You're right. I'm a sucker for anthologies too. Um, golly, that's a tough one. Because like you said, Wishmaster is a huge series. Um, you get so many cool Final Destination kills and stuff like that. You know, oh, yeah. Just, you know, the monkey paw situations where, like, everything's just turned against your your person. But, uh, yeah, tell us about Dark Side. Uh, Christian Slater, Steve Buscemi in that first story is great. Uh, that last story with uh, the gargoyle. I mean, that one just that, – that's a yes. – that's a, Oh, oh, that was in that movie, wasn't it? The, yeah. the Tunnel Bay, that one? Yes. Where the artist uh, does yeah, that one, man, Dude, that one fucked me up. So, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the mummy, at the, the even the mummy at the beginning, the way it looked was just, it was crazy mm-hmm. good. It was crazy oh, good. Dude. The, the hook going up your nose to pull your brain out, all oh, that yeah. stuff. Oh, classic. God. Yeah, so good. So Yeah, just a good movie. So, Chris, are you going to sweep it or are you going to pick uh, which one? You know, I'm going to have to sweep it, but I'm going to give flowers to Wishmaster, though, because if I remember correctly, isn't that the movie where he's like, I want you to tell my, my, my lawyer to go fuck himself? <laughs> or is that a different Wishmaster? That's it. No, that's it. That's, that's... That was the same one? Yeah, that, was yeah. my favorite, that was my favorite part of all the Wishmaster movies, because I was <laughs> like, whoa! He's digging himself down! Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't know, for some reason, I mean, yeah, definitely for... Uh, Tells from the dark side that uh, the gargoyle chick was my favorite one out of that movie. Um, mm-hmm. Why am I thinking that was the one with Danny Aykroyd wanted to show you a secret? That's not the same movie, though. You're thinking Twilight Zone, the movie. Twilight Zone, the movie. Is that in this list? No, we haven't done Twilight Zone, the movie. Yeah, we have not. That was not picked by the randomizer. Okay, sorry. Uh, for some reason, I've always, again, I've always superimposed the Twilight Zone movie because it was <laughs> uh, all, you know, yes. anthology shit within... Because uh, the Tales from Dark Side had the rabbit, right? Or am I thinking Twilight Zone movie again? The Twilight rabbit. Zone. Yeah, rabbit. Twilight Twilight Zone? Oh, wait, are you thinking of the cart, like the animated rabbit, or the the kid like, with the rabbit? kid the kid with the big rabbit killing the grandpa? Yeah, that's that's Twilight Zone the movie. Fuck, so, I must like I must like Twilight Zone the movie, dude. Yeah, you probably do. <laughs> okay, it's uh, but... <laughs> hey, you know, people who don't like Twilight Zone, I mean, heads will roll. So okay, yeah, they'll sweep it for sure. It? Yeah, no all right yeah all right the dark side goes forward next up we have 1999 Ooh. sleepy hollow versus 1997's the devil's advocate oh you <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> find ah. this find this fucking randomizer and you fire its ass and then you don't give it goddamn <laughs> unemployment no good references for a <laughs> motherfucking job tell the suck on a dick I'll fight both so, these movies. So Jeff started us <laughs> so off. Hollow, Sleepy Hollow has a damn McFarlane toy. Oh, oh, it, it does. The, uh, it had the big one with the tree and everything. Yeah. Wow, oh, they had, had a whole line. No, that series had a whole line for McFarlane. Yeah. Golly. Because, of the, cha- because the chase was the uh, was the, the headless horseman with the sharp teeth. Yep. That's yeah, right. That, was, right. that was the chase. And then Johnny Depp came with his little medical bag and stuff. Yep. Golly. I want to buy toys. <laughs> I, God damn it! I, I, you're Tim Burton, man. It's, yeah, oh, that's a tough. I was about to say, is there any more? Is there any more, is there any more Burton on this list? Uh, no. Oh no. God damn it! No, 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 no. But there you know will I mean. be for our next bracket. Yeah, that's true. All right. Okay. I don't know how you guys are going to vote, so I'm going <laughs> to say Devil's Advocate. The only Ooh. reason I'm going to say Devil's Advocate because it's Keanu Reeves, it's Charlize, it's Al Pacino, and it's probably one of my favorite storylines <laughs> ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vanity is definitely my favorite sin. You know, that yeah. that, that line and all the uh, gimmicks. And then that one chick that was just butt naked and she does the cross pose and she says, like, who am I? I was like, oh, there's just, oh, it's, a, it's a sexy ass fucking movie. It is. <laughs> and uh, the the way Charlize loses her mind while she's being fucked with, almost like a la Jacob Ladder. There's so many yeah. great things. Mm-hmm. All the but, uh, 
like you said, it's a tough one. That is uh, not a place I wanted to ever be between Sleepy Hollow and Devil's Advocate. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good one. All right, Chris, what's your pick? Titty, titties wins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to – there's a point I was going to make here as well. I'm double-checking when Devil's Advocate came out. 97. Yeah. Right? Okay. And um, – uh, I think Sleepy Hollow was 99, right? It was. I, I said the dates before the movie. 99 okay, Sleepy okay. Hollow. Sorry. 97 I Devil's Advocate. I'm 41, Aaron. I'm old and I forget shit. 1941, Chris was born. Okay. Um, so, again, uh, fuck. I like both of these films, but for me, it comes down to creep factor for these two mm-hmm. films. Uh, and then um, both of them have over the t- over the top acting uh, where the over the top acting needed to be uh, Al Pacino and then uh, Christopher Vulcan. Um, yeah. But uh, ooh, ah, I'm going to have to pick Al Pacino, it, dude. Oh, uh, not to mention, you're, are you going to go Devil's Advocate over the toys? Yeah, dude, because <laughs> it's more creepy. Well, remember the scene? Is it the black chick that comes in and talks to him, and then like the shit or her face transforms? Yeah. yeah, like right? the teeth come out and that. Yeah, yeah, buddy. And then that big painting where they all start moving around and shit in the painting. Yeah, just shit like right. that. It's plus, like you said, titties. Okay, ninety-seven. I was what, uh, sixteen, seventeen. <laughs> yep. Come on, man. Wow. We were all beating our dick like we like it owed us money. Come on. <laughs> Even if it was a horror film, right? Wow. Okay. Yeah. You know, you you go on. This yeah. podcast is not for children, Aaron. It's not. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> Wow, I, I'm surprised you chose that over uh, the, the, the toys. And for another podcast, I will explain that in due time. But due for time? now, it's Pacino and Tits. So, so you're going to explain that on our Christmas horror bracket system? Yes. yes. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to put that list together. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> I, 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 For me, I, it, I was going to pick Sleepy Hollow mainly because as much as I love Devil's Advocate, the entire movie, the ending, I hate when it's the whole like daydream sequence. That's the only thing that kills oh, it for me well. is that the ending. Everything else is amazing. I I loved it. The 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 uh, Dante's Inferno, and the the Seven Gates of Hell wall art, mm-hmm. the sculptures, amazing. All of that, but I hate that ending. I hate the ending. You're and my creepy, son. And and Come creepy hall and uh creepy. I mean sleepy hollow. The atmosphere. Sounds uh, like a haunted house in Houston. Yeah, you have Johnny Depp, oh, no. you know, before no. marriage, before his like third marriage, you had a blonde Christina Ritchie, you had a, uh, uh, I can't think of his name now, um, the the gangster in Joe Dirt, uh, uh, Kings of New York. Oh, Christopher, Christopher Walken. Walken. Yeah, Christopher yeah. Walken. Can't think of his name. You also had Alfred. That's one of his last he films, did. wasn't it? Uh, Alfred yeah. Goff, uh, who played Alfred in Batman. You did. And you had uh, what Jeffrey Wright from uh, Beetlejuice, the dad. Yep, that's yeah. true. Yep. You had all these people. I, I'm, I'm thinking of Chris Rock, and I, I keep thinking of Foo Fighters. The Foo Fighters. <laughs> so, what was the music video where he's dancing? Uh, oh, uh, on the escalator and shit. Something weapon. Uh, uh, Fat Boy Slim. Punk. Fat Boy Slim. Weapon yeah. of choice. Weapon of choice. Weapon of choice. There you go. Yeah. So that was going to be my pick was uh, Sleepy Hollow, just because of all that. Uh, I and pick. Christina Ricci was so hot. What she was. Behind me? She, she yeah. definitely was. All right. Black Snake Moan. Go ahead. Next, next the, movie. The, oh, the, the, fi- the, the final Jeez. battle in the the final battle in our first round. We've got 1998's Halloween H20 versus 1993's Kronos. And speaking of Del Toro, uh, yeah. there we go. We have Kronos okay. with Del Toro. Yeah. And we have the chin. H2O. <laughs> you can't fight the chin. Yes. Yeah. All right. Who, who yeah. who's going first on this? Uh, I think it's your turn to go first on this one, Chris. Uh, okay. Well, I'm a Del Toro guy. I love Del Toro. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm a Ron Perlman guy. And uh, honestly, when I saw that on the list, I had saw that movie so long ago and completely uh-huh. forgot about it. And I forgot that it was like a Dracula film. And <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. I mean, do you, I mean, do you remember like when was the last time you watched that movie? When I two... bought the Criterion Collection. Yeah. <laughs> How About long ago was that? A year or two ago. Oh, they are way more brushed up than I was. I'm, I'm more brushed up. Than, I watched it like 
like last week because I was <laughs> like, what the fuck is Kronos? Okay. And I went to go back to watch it and I was like, oh shit, I remember this. I remember flashes of those movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember enjoying it, man. And, then, and I think around that same time, didn't Beauty and the Beast happen on TV where uh, Ron Perlman was the Beast? Yep. He was also the Beast in the 90s as well. The I remember 90s. being fascinated by his fat ass head. You know what I mean? As a kid. Because... I'm thinking of Eric Stoltz and Mask. Right? I was thinking of, uh, what's, the, what's the name of the, the maniac cop guy? Zahn? Uh, oh, God. oh, yeah. He, he was the shin too, man. Um, I'm going to go Kronos, man. Uh, even though Kronos? I feel like I'm in a losing battle here for Kronos, I'm going with Kronos, yeah. Hey, uh, my pick for this, uh, okay. we have Halloween H2O. We've got, you know, Jim Lee Curtis returning back to play Laurie Strode, along with uh, Josh Hartnett, who had the most terrible haircut He's ever had in all of his film existence. <laughs> I'd say, man. <clears throat> he I also had LL Cool so J bad. as a security guard, and you had was it Michelle Williams from uh, Dawson's Creek? Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, you're versus right. Del Toro's Kronos, who you had a Ron Perlman speaking Spanish. So I'm going to pick Kronos because he spoke Spanish. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Are we sweeping it? What are we doing here? Yeah, Jeff, what's your pick? I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna stand up for H two O. Really? Yeah, I, I don't know why. <laughs> Honestly, I would say Chronos because you know it's a better film. It is a better film. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, not to mention, uh, LL Cool J did, didn't he? He survived, didn't he? Or no? He did. No, he, he, survived. Survived. he survived. Yeah. He did. Yeah, and then he survived in Deep Blue Sea. He was the guy who was like, "I'm breaking the black character mold." So he, you yeah, know, that was uh, but that was because he was the deepest, bluest. His hand was like a shark's fin. Yeah, he was the rapper. I mean, without <laughs> him, there's no soundtrack. That was it. Was the soundtrack song at the end of that <laughs> Deep Blue Sea? Deepest, bluest. My hand is like a shark's fin. Like, yeah. Oh, oh my god. god yeah. <laughs> Plus, I remember when Deep Blue Sea came out. I was annoyed by the chick's name, Saffron, or whatever. Oh, the the actress, yeah. the lead yeah. actress, because yeah. all I heard in my head was like, "I'm so mad about Saffron, <laughs> Saffron's mad about me." <clears throat> Call me Miller Yellow. That's all I could think the whole time I was watching that movie. And then <laughs> I'm sick and tired of these motherfuckers. Wham! That was the best part of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Like Thomas Jane sliding everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just remember walking out of Deep Blue Sea because I saw in theaters with uh, me and Jen saw it. And we're walking out, and this kid comes out in front of us, and he's like rapping along with the song. So this oh, kid God. has seen this movie enough to where he Holy knows the crap. lyrics to the song of this movie. Good for him, man. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm never going to see this movie again. Oh. So <laughs> it's, it's, wow, here we go. So that is round one. And hmm? you had that, what, one arm fucking uh, pull up? That... Oh, like, oh, oh, yeah, like the Mark Wahlberg pull up from uh, Daddy's yeah. Home. Again, this goes to prove my point that there's something about Michael they should have explained later and they just chose not to. But you know what anyway. it is? It's Pilates. He, he does a lot of Pilates. Okay. Yeah, I'll he, just he, say Tybo, but yeah. He does, he does he does spin classes on Tuesday and he listens to Steve Winwood. That's all he does. Yeah. He just watches Billy Blank's tapes in the sewer, getting ready for his sister, or maybe not his sister, I don't know. He listens to Steve Winwood. <laughs> all right so let, let's move on to round two here we go this is this is where it starts to get a little difficult because now we have the haunting versus bride of chucky that's the first matchup and yeah. i will start this one off i will start it off i'm gonna pick uh bride of chucky i'm gonna go with that one over the haunting uh jeff what's your pick i'm gonna stick with the haunting you stick uh, with the haunting? much as yeah Okay. Yeah, as much okay. as I love the the road film that is Bride of Chucky, The Haunting still probably my like I said guilty pleasure. Okay, Chris, looks like you're the tiebreaker on this one. Do I even have a dog in this race, man? You guys chingle me on the first round <laughs> on this one. You, <laughs> hey, you chose Devil's Advocate over Sleepy Hollow's action figures. Oh, that's true. I, I am the asshole. Okay. um... No, nah, man, I'm going to go with uh, out of these two. I'm going to go with Bride of Chucky. Bride of Chucky. Yeah. That is. Because, uh, like... yeah, that one comes down to another uh, DVD shelf pull. That is a DVD shelf pull. And also, it's a, cable, it's a cable flip, too, to watch if it's on. That's true. Yeah. If you got nothing else to do that day, if you're doing laundry, watch Bride of Chucky. Yep. So, next Bride up, Chucky. we've got Species versus Scream. 
Damn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, Jeff, you're up first. So I'll pick the good screen. film. I'm gonna pick Scream. I pick Scream. <laughs> the good one. Yeah, the one I can actually remember the uh, you know plot points. Okay. Because I can't really. Yeah, when I reach into species, I always like. The whole movie is based on reproduction to spread yeah. the monster. That's it. <laughs> reproduction. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, that's how she had two marriages. So. <laughs> you can, there's not a better film blurb for the fucking poster than that. Spread the monster <laughs> species. <laughs> reproduction the movie. All right, Chris, what's your pick? Species or Scream? Uh, I, I'm going ahead and say it now, man. I feel like Scream's going to be kind of a powerhouse in this thing for mm-hmm. obvious reasons. Uh, so Scream for me. Okay. And that will be a sweep. Scream for me. Scream. Hey, Scream is a good movie. Yeah. It, it, it is fun. Uh, and it is moving on. It's beating out species. And I don't I even blame I, it for giving us Jamie Kennedy. It, I still give it a pass. <laughs> it is true. Oh, thank you. my book. I can change your vote. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It did give us Jimmy Kennedy, and it also gave, and it also gave us uh, Skeet Ulrich too. So. <laughs> Skeet. <laughs> Skeet Ulrich. I want to. Oh so, 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 dear, what are you gonna name our kid? Let's call him Skeet. His dad while he's eating his bologna sandwich after they got done banging. He's, he's like, "What are you gonna call this thing?" Uh, the last big part of my life. Skeet, nah, clearly, l- little jo- little John's in the background. <laughs> Hey, 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 little John, what should we call our kid? Ah, skeet, 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 skeet. <laughs> He's going to be famous from the window to the wall. So it dripped off the balls? Oh, God, right. maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I wasn't there. <laughs> all, right. all right, next up. Next up, you got Frighteners versus Tales from the Dark Side. Oof. Oh. Oof. And Chris, this is where you started off. This is the shit I hate about this. <laughs> Man, uh, you wouldn't think this would be difficult because one is clearly a heavier weight than the other. And because, uh, uh, again, I'm with you on that, man. An anthology movie goes a long way for me, especially when it's a good anthology film, uh, i.e., Trick or Treat and things like that. Um, so, yeah, tell us from the dark side. Uh, as an artist, that 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 one, you know, thing with the gargoyle chick. I mean. Yeah, that that I can remember that story verbatim in my head. I can't remember all the short stories from that, mm-hmm. but it's like you said, the mummy and that one are the two that often come to mind because it was so fucking, especially the way her eyes were when she transformed and shit. Yes, and the you know the you know all the bullshit coming out of her. I was like, fuck, dude. Like, I, I, he waited so long and he finally slipped up with somebody he could trust, and he was banging a gargoyle monster the whole time. Hey, that's where Demona came from. Yeah, good point. So yeah, it's definitely going to be uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from the Dark Side. Ooh, my pick. Because I like both of them. I do like both of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have, again, Jeffrey Combs, John Aston, Michael J. Fox before he got the shakes. And then we have Christian Slater. We got Steve Buscemi. We got Matthew Lawrence. Yeah. Uh it was his last hoorah in film, right? I think that was the last thing he really did that was of note, wasn't it? Michael J. Fox. Uh, film wise, yeah, I believe. Big. Which one? Which one? No, I was saying film wise. I think that yeah, was film wise. Yeah, I think that was it. That that was yeah. his, that was it. I think after that he did Stuart Little, and then that was kind of his send off. I, I don't think I've ever seen Stuart Little. You're not missing much. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. Uh oh man. I mean, you know, Tales from the Dark Side. I'm going to have to go with that one. Just because the anthology, practical effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched, I've watched both of these recently over the, the years, like quite a bit. But Tales from the Dark Side. It's, it's a hard choice. That's, that's a hard decision. Yeah. Jeff, I think that's going to be the Jeff? one I'm watching tonight, man. Uh, I'm going to say The Frighteners. Mm-hmm. And the only reason okay. I'm saying that is because I think the first story in Tales from the Dark Side with the mummy is great. I think the last story with the gargoyle is great. But that one story with the black cat being hunted by the hitman. Yeah. That's kind of like the, uh, that's kind of like where you go and grab another beer and make yourself a tortilla or something. I don't know. 
Wait, are you thinking of that or Cat's Eye? Are you thinking of Tales from the Dark Side or Cat's Eye? No, Cat's Eye. Oh, Cat in the Brain. You were thinking of the old man with the, the cat in the house. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking Cat's Eye for some reason with the hitman. Because uh, that was a weird one where the old guy's in the wheelchair and he's, he hires the hitman yeah. to take out the black cat and all that stuff. And yeah. that was just like, it's a weird, it's kind of like a creep show too where it just has that weird kind of fall off. It's like it starts yeah. okay and then it kind of just dips and then it gets better <laughs> at the end. That's right. That's right. But Frighteners for me, like you said, all-star cast, Jeffrey Combs is great. And I think the story with Michael J. Fox playing something that I'm glad he had a chance to do after yes. his Back to the Future. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the one thing I have to say about Frighteners, the, the one line that always gets me, just because it's so s- silly and stupid, was uh, like like the two ghost friends that Michael J. Fox has. One of them is like, please let up a cigarette. Just blow it in my face. Please, I want to smell that cigarette smell. I want to smell that cigar. <laughs> Give me some form of nicotine. <laughs> help, on, help a brother out. And the, and, the, and the guy's like, but you're not brothers. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> or when the uh, the old cowboy uh, has sex with the dead corpse, he's like, I like it when they lay still like that. <laughs> like, God damn it. John I forgot about that part. Yeah, uh, Gomez so Adams. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. That's a tough one. So Jeez. next up. We have Devil's Advocate versus Kronos. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> I'll start this one off. I'm going to go Kronos. I I just. Really? That's a fun movie. That's just a fun movie. Uh, I've got to pick that one. Uh, Devil's Advocate, again, great movie. Everything about that is great that I like, except for the ending. I mean, if I were to watch that movie up until the very end, whenever uh, Pacino is like raising his arms up in the air and, you know, Calling down his power in Brimstone, if it would cut off there, this movie would be have my pick every single time. But because it's literally a daydream at the end, I'm like, ah, I can't do that. Gotcha. So I, I'm going to pick Kronos. My love Kronos, especially that line. I mean, because he had the insect and the little amulet thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love the line he says that, like, uh, the reason Jesus walked on water was kind of alluding to the use of the uh, the device. Yep. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to stick yeah. with Devil's Advocate because that's like Mickey Rourke with uh, De Niro. They did Angel Heart together. So yes. having Keanu Reeves doing with Pacino, essentially the devil, you know, making its due or uh, yeah. claiming. I don't know. But yeah, Devil's Advocate all the way. Still. All right. Chris, looks like you're the tiebreaker on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, this one it would come down to what sticks to memory. Um, Kronos is a good movie. I enjoyed it, but it didn't it didn't have a lasting effect on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look back on it retrospectively, knowing what I know of the filmography of Del Toro and my love for things. I've, I've watched a lot of shit with Ron Perlman in it. I didn't realize that until recently. Apparently, I'm a Ron Perlman guy, but um, I mean, Sons of Anarchy, come on, come on. Yeah, Alien, Alien Resurrection. Alien <laughs> Resurrection, Blade, uh, Blade Two. Oh, There's so yeah. much good shit that well, Ron Perlman's just like. It's well, in his I contract. Mean, like, if your movie's remotely cool, I'll be in it. Well, I mean, he's best friends with yeah. Del Toro, so if, if it's Del Toro directing or part of it, Perlman's going to be in it, just like Bruce Campbell and uh, Sam Raimi, Tim uh, Burton and Johnny Depp, yeah, yeah. Rob Zombie and his wife. So it's they're always they're always <laughs> putting their best friends and partners into the movie. <laughs> that woman is a sexually transmitted star. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, fucking A, man. Uh, Kronos is great, but I'm going to go with um, Devil's Advocate. Devil's Advocate, man. Because that's just, there's so many scenes that are just burned into my long term memory, uh, especially as being a kid and just seeing that shit. You're like, whoa, you know, because again, when effects were becoming what they were and things. You look at you look at that now. You're not impressed at all. But back then, you're yeah. like, "What the fuck did I just look at?" You know, it was so different. <laughs> so true. I remember I remember seeing that like in a dollar theater by my house when I was growing up and shit like that. Man, it was cool. And my mom, you know, my mom and dad just want to get me out of the house. We're like, "Here's ten dollars. Go hang out and play Street Fighter, get popcorn, and watch movies all day." You know, I remember <laughs> going to alone. see Children of the Corn and shit like that. You know, uh, Evil Dead. Like I saw a lot of movies at the uh, dollar theater. And that was uh, one I, I, I can't I there. can't wait for the kids to be that age. I could just like be like. There's 20 bucks. Get lost for like five hours. <clears throat> Take the away. flying car to Alpha Sigma One and don't come back for two two parsecs. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, I think my favorite dollar movie theater uh, story is a. Uh, I think I went and saw this film called Groundhog Day. 
<laughs> that, that, that fucking that was the greatest dollar I ever spent in my life. I was just like, that's, that's a good movie. I did I did not know like I guess I missed the trailer and then when I saw that I was like, this is fucking fantastic. Oh yeah. <laughs> my, my my greatest uh dollar movie experience was going to go see uh Beverly Hills Cop 3 at the Dollar Cinema, not knowing that there was a part three, not seeing any <laughs> not seeing any of the others before that, only see, starting off. Oh, the franchise on part three. That was the one with the roller coaster, right? The theme yes, part? at Wonder yeah. World. Yes. How the hell did that <laughs> happen, Aaron? <laughs> what? How'd you? You're like I'm. I'm blocking out Eddie Murphy's career. I just don't pay. No, well, no, well, no. I just had. No, I never had an interest to see any of the other movies. Oh, okay. But I'm like, okay, but you know, my choices were very limited for Dollar Cinema. I'm like, okay, Beverly Hills Cop three. It's got Eddie Murphy in it. You know, he's funny sometimes. This movie has to be good. And I'm watching, I'm like, holy crap, it's Valky Vark Takamas is in it from Perfect Strangers. Oh, it's sure, great. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect Strangers. Perfect Strangers. So. All right, we have completed another round. We are on to the final four of this thing, and it's only going to get harder. So, first up, we have oh, Ryder Chucky versus Scream. Uh, this is the first hard one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it, it could be. So, Jeff, what's your pick? Uh, I All I see is Rose McGowan, so I'm going to say Scream. <laughs> well, wait a second. Scream. Did you see Rose McGowan, or did you see her superiorly erect nipples? I think she was there behind him. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the movie 10 minutes before she was, let's be honest. Golly. Hey, Golly. she had 5G before there was 5G. Yeah. That was just like, it was so you know, cold like, on that set. <laughs> I guess hell. this is a perfect age, perfect movie. That was a that was a good time. Yeah, I think she was like twenty three, and her implants were four. So, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Chris, yeah. what's your pick? Screamer, <laughs> Brad, or Chucky? This one uh, will be surprising to you, I think, maybe uh, okay. because. Um, there's, there's one thing that sets these movies apart. One is uh, the continuation of a tradition, and one starts a new one. You know what I mean? Okay. And so, you know, we did – we did give me, like, one thing about Bride of Chucky that uh, kind of set it apart from the rest of the, um, the, the Chucky stuff that really sticks out as a game changer in the Chucky series. John Ritter as a bad guy. That's all I got. John Ritter was a, was the abusive uh, uncle, possibly predatory. We had oh. uh, we had um, okay. <laughs> what? Oh crap! What's her name? We had um, oh crap! I can't think of her name. Tiffany, the the actress. Jennifer Tilly. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, Jennifer Tilly in a uh, bathtub, covered in suds. Ooh. Uh, Jennifer Tilly, aka Jennifer Titty. Yeah. Um, and we had uh, Scarface Chucky. That was his first Scarface Chucky uh, appearance. Yeah. I mean, but Bride of Chucky kind of was fun, uh, riding on the heels of the 90s renaissance of horror films, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with Scream, man. I think Scream just. Before Scream, what, what, what did we have outside of the 80s stuff that we were falling back on? You know what I mean? That is true. Uh, we didn't have. Nothing but sequels back then. Much yeah. like Bride of Chucky. And Scream takes it because I was also going to vote for Scream as well. Yeah. So that is a sweep for that one. All right. So next up, we have uh, Tales from the Dark Side versus Devil's Advocate. And Chris, you're picking first. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Not fair, man. Um Okay, uh -oh. I I have given that I would given the devil his due, uh, 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 but um, no nah, man, uh, it was it was Devil's Advocate. And what was it? The other one? Tell us from the dark side. The movie. Yeah, um, tell us from the dark side. I think so. It went out, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm like you. I'm an anthology guy. Yeah. Because it goes back to Creep Show and shit like that. Like the idea of the old Tales from the Crypt comic books and stuff like that. I would read those at my cousin's house. Because yep. my uncle collected them, and that was kind of my those honestly those comic books were kind of my introduction into horror. Outside my mom like taking me horror movies way too early and shit like that. Yep. So 
you know, yeah, that's going to be Tulsa and the Dark Side for me. Tulsa and the Dark Side. I will second that, Tulsa and the Dark Side. Uh, again, great, to me, it's a great anthology, the special effects, the gargoyle scene, the the uh, the mummy one, and then the opening backstory with uh, Matthew Lawrence being kept in a cage and being prepped for dinner. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that I think that's just overall fun. Uh, mm-hmm. And to be honest, I I'll watch Tales from the Dark Side a lot more than I will watch Devil's Advocate. Yeah. Uh, so that's gonna be my pick. Jeff, what was your pick? Uh, it was Devil's Advocate. Devil's Advocate. I'm still gonna, yeah. I'm You're still, still gonna give her props. Like... You'd still give it props. Taylor Hackford, blood in, blood out. Four forty. Four forty. All right. And now we're down to the final two. So this will be Scream versus Tulsa from the Dark Side. And for oh, some man. of us, that might be a hard decision. Some of us that might be might be easy decision. Uh Jeff, you can start us off on this one. Okay. Um I hate being a naysayer, mm-hmm. but y'all said it. I think, like I think Chris said it earlier, it was a uh, scream's going to be a hard one to beat. Mm-hmm. Ghostface is a, uh, and I guess that <laughs> twist ending with the double killers. It's, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to say no to something that got so many things right in the horror genre. It, it definitely is. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, scream for uh, yeah, that's my pick. Scream. All right, Chris, what's your pick? Wow. Yeah, and you, you it's a valid point, man. Um uh the the, the, the double killer ending was kinda like the nineties version of the uh the dick the dick reveal in Sleepaway Camp, right? You're like, Whoa, didn't see that coming, you know? <laughs> They're gonna say Boogie Nights. <laughs> <laughs> Boogie Nights. <laughs> I mean, anytime you see a dick on screen you're like, wait a minute, you know, like I'm not in the privacy of my own home. Is this acceptable? You know, like cool. so <laughs> Don't don't um, watch Euphoria then. <laughs> <laughs> oh god don't watch euphoria oh no don't don't ruin zendaya for me um <laughs> i didn't tom Allen did oh, oh no you can make an <laughs> argument that he's doing just fine with zendaya sir but anyway whip, whip. web oh. web shooter everywhere yeah it is anyway oh god <laughs> jesus all right all right all right um you can make an argument that Scream created an anthology of films, kind of. Um, although I think we probably should have stopped at, what, three? Scream three or something like that? I would agree with you on that. I yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it's you know, that was, you know, kicking the dead horse after a while. Um, tell us my dark side, man. That's honestly, that's another one in my mind. If I'm going to go in that living room and pull a movie off the DVD rack, it's going to be Tales from the Dark Side before you be scream. Or when I go to this fire stick and I start looking up what I'm going to watch tonight while I'm working on mm-hmm. art, it's going to be that. Tales from the Dark Side? Yeah. yeah. Or fuck Twilight Zone the movie. Apparently, I want to suck that movie's dick so bad I can't see straight. <laughs> so I'm going to have to figure it out. <laughs> you want to see that rabbit? I'm telling you, yeah. Who yeah, doesn't want to see the rabbit? You know what I'm talking about? You feed your head. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, and I'm the tiebreaker. So, yeah. yep. Scream has an iconic killer. The, the The mantle gets passed on from person to person, but the costume is iconic. That that ghost face is iconic. And that's fair because we don't get that's we fair. don't get iconic killers anymore. We don't. I think I know they're trying to do it with Hatchet. They're trying to do it with other movies that are coming out. And Terrifier. Terrifier. Art? Yeah, Art to Clown. Yeah, Art to Clown. Art, you can say Art is Art's one. I think Art's uh, yeah. the successor there. Art is the successor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I'm looking at it on merchandise, Scream has more merchandise than Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, yeah. What movie do I watch more annually? Tales from the Dark Side. Mm-hmm. How much merch do I have of each movie? I've got more Scream things. I got the Ghostface NECA figure that came out last year. I've got uh, the soundtrack of parts one and three. Somewhere in my uh my my DVD my uh CD shelf. What is that, Dad? <laughs> uh, that 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 tells people how old I am. I'm very old. <laughs> you old fuck. I, no, I, I, that's okay. I've got a bunch of binders full of CDs. I'm right there with you. Eighties icon. My ARP card. Hey, I, I had a car. I had a CD car binder that I had that had the uh, the Scream Hell soundtrack. Yeah, in it there. was big and it was ungodly mm. and hard to change. It. Changing CDs at the red light or mm-hmm. being really to, dangerous and you're on the freeway. I had to put that cassette in and connect it to my CD player. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> please tell me. Please tell me you had the stabilizer base on the middle console so that your CD player wouldn't skip. Hey, I, I'm old. Skip? I'm not rich. <laughs> oh well, you know, some of us, some of us had a little better hey, than others, didn't we? Hmm. Hey, as long as you had that base boost, <laughs> turn turn the little base boost icon on. Uh, Oh, man. Oh, I had man. a Ford probe. You know what oh, I mean? Shit. I was, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. And somebody yeah. broke into it and stole my masterpiece CD because I was oh, shit. trying to maintain my street cred. I'm white. Make, make him say, uh. Make him say, uh. <laughs> <laughs> when I got to my car, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. My masterpiece CD my, is gone. Took my masterpiece it's like my 10 inch Fosgate fucking subwoofer. <laughs> I still got my 21 a.m. Fuck you guys. I'm going to the pawn shop. Yeah. They took my cigarette Jeez. lighter plug in neon lights. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> this is about they, family. Some, they broke into my Pontiac Le Mans, my 1993 Pontiac Le Mans. Dude, can we give the first two uh, Fast and Furious soundtrack some credit, though? Yeah, credit debt. No, dude. Like, that, they, had good, they had good songs on that one, too. I'm a metal guy, but, like, uh, my favorite part of that movie was the 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 guy with the arm gauntlets on the leather because he was the dude that didn't play no shit with Brian. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he liked uh, Dom's He'll, sister. Yeah, the yeah. Australian guy. And he was in Blade too. He was. Yeah. Yeah. He was. That guy was cool, man. I want that guy was hashtag goals. I wanted to be that dude. Hashtag goals. Fuck with me, I'll beat your ass, you know. Yeah. Uh, he didn't take shit from nobody. I take shit from nobody. If I wanted Mia's tuna sandwich, I was gonna have Mia's tuna sandwich. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, what are we talking about? Fast and Furious soundtrack. <laughs> Car crashes. Car crashes. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> CD player stabilizers. <laughs> yeah, a rich man's game. <laughs> Base boost. I was on my way to Spencer's to get a cool thirty dollar t shirt. Thirty dollars. Okay, that's Have you bought a right T-shirt? There. That's Spencer's? rich money. Mo- hey, no, I went to Walmart and bought T-shirts. Or what was it, Gadzooks, dude? When Chris Jericho came out for Raw, I mean, okay, you're not a wrestling fan, right? So I get that. But like, <laughs> when he came out with a silver shirt, everybody went to Gadzooks to get a fucking silver shirt. Come yep. on, I, Come I on. did have, I did have one of those. I'm not gonna See, lie, I had, I had a silver shirt. So had... everybody, everybody wanted to be the rich guy with the stabilizer, but nobody can be the rich guy with the stabilizer, can they? So y'all, and the y'all Ford. Got probe <laughs> you need to post pictures of y'all representing with the silver shirt uh, i dude, actually I, I have a picture somewhere. somewhere i have a picture somewhere of me wearing the silver shirt and uh whenever wrestlemania 17 came to houston i have that uh that picture somewhere dude I I have have like, some, i'm sorry I, 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 to go with that shirt i had some sick ass like um clod hoppery type leathery shoes that i got from guys i didn't that go that like, far velvety flames on the tips of the shoes and shit hey hey i didn't go that Come far on. i had 20 dollar chucks and the ball checks. bearing necklace. I had that. Too. I did. I had I, that. Yeah. I had that too as well. Okay. With my, my my Kenny Bucky hat from South Park. <laughs> okay. You 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 again. Rich man's game. I didn't have that. So <laughs> <laughs> before he got off track, uh, final two. Yeah. What were we talking about? Scream again? versus Tales from the Dark Side. Uh, yes. and and it's I'm gonna have to choose. Ooh. You're the heartbreaker now. You got the it juice is. now. It is. It is. I'm going to go Tulsa on the dark side. I'm going to go Tulsa on the dark side on it. And that is our winner for the 90s. Tulsa on the dark side. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, I mean, again, I've been handing out flowers this whole time. But, like, to me, dude, like, this is a nostalgia trip uh, right down the middle for everybody who's on. So, you know, if you remember stuff from it and it's ingrained in your long-term memory, it then is. that's obviously the winner. You know what I mean? Definitely. Now, Rose McGowan's tits are ingrained in my memory, but that's a Google search away. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it's whatever. I mean, the thing with Scream, <laughs> the, thing that the, part, the, the only problem I have with Scream is that every time I have a memory of a scene from Scream, I think of the scary movie parody of that scene. And I yeah. laugh better at that than I than enjoyed Scream. I'm going to let you fucking boob get pulled so, uh, I, I just, I mean, my, one of my favorite parts from Scary Movie is when they're pulling up to the school, all the newspapers are out there, and that one reporter, white folks dead, black people here, we get the hell out of here, and they take off. Dude. <laughs> Wasn't the main girl from Scary Movie's name Sydney? Yeah, uh, Cindy. Sydney. Yeah. Cindy. Cindy. Okay. Sydney was, uh, what's was, you call it, Scream. Scream. Uh, what was uh, Marlon Wayne's character? 
Smokey. Smokey. When they're sitting there, you know, doing the, uh, what was that movie with Julia, what's her face? The dancing movie with the white girl and the black dude? Save the oh, last Step dance. Up. Oh, yeah, there you go. Step, was it Step Up? No, Save no, the Last Dance. Think... Save the Last Dance. Yeah, and he's like, you got to have some swagger, and you got to be like, uh, son, uh, son. And it's just like she gets up and does it and punches this Asian chick. You got to run that jacket. shit, bitch. Yeah. Takes your jacket. <laughs> That's the best. I gotta want to watch Scary Movie now. No shit. <laughs> scary Movie 2 yeah. was great, though. The bird? I, yeah. Oh, dude. Come on. I'll be the bigger man and walk away. Walk away. <laughs> oh, that deserves a standing <laughs> ovation. <laughs> I fucked your mom last night. What'd you say, son? Boom. He's like hitting the cake. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I, I'm, I'm a little upset that that uh, that with, the, with today's NECA reveal of the, of the ultimate ghost face, that the was up face wasn't in there as a as a throw in, even though Miramax true. Miramax owns uh, the first three movies of both franchises, so that should have been there. That should have been in yeah, there. definitely Var- variant head that needs to be sold. <laughs> well, I mean, they got the devil's head from uh, Dead by Daylight, the the, the oh. ghost devil, the ghost face devil. He's in there, so I was a little upset that I'm like, hey, where, where's the was up face? Uh, Here's a where, where do where's my car thing? What's your say, Ray? What's mine say? Fucked me, Ray. Hey. Fucked me, Ray. <laughs> oh man, that's not cool. <laughs> God damn. Oh. God damn it. Um, <laughs> this is supposed to be spooky what... season, not comedy season. I think we all know what we're gonna reach for now when we like cut off. Everybody's gonna be a hundred percent. Halloween series. Dude, the the cold freezer where she's giving him the hand job to keep him alive and just fucking blast her to the ceiling. (laughs) He's in a smoke. Yeah, that dude was at the um at the uh, Houston Horror Film Fest, wasn't he? He was. He was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all I could think about I was like, oh god. I don't want to think about that. Oh god. God damn. Oh man. Well, I I gotta say, Jeff, thanks for joining us for to help us with this bracket, dude. (laughs) It's been an awesome been an awesome time having you on. And helping us with this uh, with this bracket set for this side, uh, been a lot of fun. Uh, where can people find you on social media if they want to hear more of your jokes and hear more of your uh, your uh, horror movie reviews? Uh, I'd love to say that we're still rocking deep in our Texas, but I think uh, a little bit pre pandemic we kind of pumped the brakes on it. Uh, okay. Everything's still up. Uh, you can always check us out on Deep in the Heart Texas. Um, we're on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Podbean. And, uh, yeah, all the uh, old episodes are still there for y'all to giggle and laugh with and roll your eyes. Uh, it, it, it's surprisingly not very me, too, when I go back to a lot of these older episodes. So I kind of feel bad. And I've been uh, attacked for, you know, you know, you guys are so insensitive. But it's like we're just trying to have fun. And like yeah. we do here, you know, like y- y'all just want to – we just want to yeah. talk about what makes our genre, that, uh, that you know, the horror genre so fun. Yeah, people, it's... people, some people just don't want to have fun anymore, man. That's kind of a shame. Yeah, not for me to tell a joke anymore. You know. Yeah, we're we're so quick to condemn things like Chevy Chase or Bill Murray just because of actions. Like you know, it's like, dude, it's all funny games. It's all yeah. exactly entertainment. Yeah. All it takes is one person getting upset to ruin somebody's career. That's and... it. And uh, I can't believe y'all chose Ghoulies over VHS too. What? Oh, uh, okay. Well, okay. VHS two. I'm sorry. Like y'all said, that demon part. It's got to be like one of the best things ever. Yeah. That that demon story with oh, that's, that's that's the best. But Ghoulies, okay. right, it's the beginning of a series. It is the beginning of the series. You yeah. know, and, and uh, again, if I went in there right now, do I want to like have a good yuck yuck laugh like we've been doing the last ten minutes, or do I want to get the shit scared out of myself and not go to sleep till three a.m. And and I guess that's the point of the movie, but like. You know, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I, I I can only do so much in my picks. I can only do so much. <laughs> and, and again, and again, the hammer episode. Wow. I, I'm, I'm not going to spoil. I, I'm not going to spoil anything because I don't know what, if I'm going to put this episode before the hammer episode because of the guests we have on that one. Uh, but just wow. So again, <laughs> Jeff, thanks for joining us. It yeah, thanks, man. Awesome. Appreciate it. And don't be a stranger. We'll have to have, come, have you come back on, man. All right, oh, Chris. Where can that. they find you and your? Where can they find you and your arts, Chris? Uh, I'm most active on two platforms. Uh, I canceled my only hams uh, because I got a lot of hair on my ass, and nobody's trying to pay to see that shit. So, um, use some cocoa butter on a hairy ass. Hey, 
At that point, it's just a goo- gooey, hairy ass. That smells like cocoa. Again, that's a Google search away. Who's going to pay me five bucks a month to see my gooey, hairy ass? Hey. Don't Would shrink you, the Aaron? King. Is that good? Oh. We're, we're friends. I, I'm not. No. The Fruity Pebbles are still <laughs> over there. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, the social media platforms that I use the most for I actually respond to you would be like Facebook, uh, which you can just Google search my name. Or if you're into that uh, whole HTTP thing, it's facebook.com forward slash internet skills because I was a big fan of Napoleon Dynamite. Or you can... <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me, man. The That's internet awesome, dude. is forever. Mad, mad um, chicks. I uh, got some mad nunchuck skills. Some, do some sweet jumps. Come on, man. <laughs> Did I tell that story on here on the podcast? No, but we're when that movie came out? in the sky. Uh, I don't think you have yet, but we're, but we're already at an hour, over an hour and a half. Okay, real quick. I had a choice with two movies to go with my friend to go see the movies. <laughs> at the same theater, it was downtown, it was only showing two films Napoleon Dynamite, Fahrenheit 9 11. I think I made the right choice. So, anyway, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right choice. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it would have been ladder likely, 49. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been back Super size me or carry. I mean, you know, it's, anyway. Um, the, yeah, Why'd so, you say carry? <laughs> I don't know, man. They're all going to laugh at you. Right? Yes. Okay. Even Adam Sandler riffed on it. Come on. Um, oh, yeah, Instagram. Uh, that's where I post all my artwork and stuff like yes. that. I'm going to have a daughter next month, and so I'll be posting baby pictures. You'll get sick of those, too. But uh, on Instagram, it's at Chris Foreman Artist. Uh, again, uh, I'm a sociable guy, man. Come say what's up, and we'll talk horror movies or art or art about horror movies and movies about horror, art, uh, whatever. You know, we're, we're yeah. down for that. That's cool. No hairy asses, though. And uh, if you like what you hear, we have a uh, Podbean account, go check it out there. We have a YouTube, Please. we put unboxing videos and figure reviews sometimes whenever that happens. We have a Facebook, we have an Instagram, and give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. Review us, right? Review us. You review us. Click yeah. the bell on YouTube so you get notified whenever we have new content that drops over there. And uh, that's pretty much it. So if you made it this far, thanks for listening. Hey, and you know what? We're non committal. We only post like a uh, podcast every six months, so it's not like we're going to flood your shit. So, every like, six months? I'm at least trying to get us through Halloween. I'm at least trying to get us through Halloween. I've I've been stressing trying to get these episodes out for Halloween. So I'm talking with you, man. Life life is what it is. You know, we're we're doing the best we can, right? But but like when we have our when we have our Halloween finale episode, we we can talk some more then. About I want to do Christmas movies too and shit like that. Don't start setting up things that you. Until next time, guys. Uh, until next time, uh, you know. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, check out CrossTheStreamsMedia.com to hear more episodes of this podcast and the other shows on the Cross the Streams Network. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download your favorite shows. Visit CrossTheStreamsMedia.com for more information. See you next time. has been a Cross the Streams media podcast.